What you and I are witnessing here in regard to this particular bar chart is something quite amazing. All right, so this is basically, a, we'll look at the t-test of the mean, the difference of the means, uh, sounds technical, but what it is basically a 4.6 year biological age reversal with nothing more than a methylation supportive diet. Now that equates to a little bit more than one year, a biological age reversal for every two weeks on this DNA methylation supportive diet. That is just incredible. Now, the interesting part about this too, before we delve into the research, this is actually really very, very easy to follow. Requires a little bit of discipline, but the results, if equivalent to the study in the real world, is quite astounding. Another interesting aspect to it too is this. They looked at the study participants that came into the study were a little bit younger than their chronological age biologically. Now, for those not familiar, you have a biological age and a chronological age. So about a little younger than what their chronological age would normally be. So what that means is that the biological age reversal in the study had probably to do more with other factors outside the absence or mitigation of disease. Now that is quite astounding overall, but let's look at the study real fast. It's very, very simple. Uh, I want to go into the back uh, story a little bit to just why this happened. They did a study like this prior. It was another eight week uh, uh, diet, very similar to DNA methylation here, and but it was only done in men. And this time they did a very small study, albeit there was a male initially that was in the study, but the male dropped out, leaving just women in the study, and which is fine because the other study was all men anyways. And this one turned out to have very similar results, albeit the prior study with the men was randomized controlled. Double blind be kind of tough to do with the methylation diet. You'll understand more why in a second, but let us begin. Diet lifestyle program versus biological age of female case series. These data suggest that a methylation supportive diet and lifestyle intervention may be favorably, maybe, may favorably influence biological age in both sexes, middle age and older. Uh, there are other factors involved too, besides the diet, a lot of lifestyle changes, including Keep in mind, uh, not eating between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. So you have to look at those little details as well, but to proceed. And also, I want to show you the title to the full study. It says so much more. As follows, potential reversal of biological age in women following an eight-week methylation supportive diet and lifestyle program, a case series. Now, now that I have your attention in regards to this, uh, this is the synopsis of the diet itself and you can freeze it there, but I'll show you a little more detailed example of the diet towards the end of the film, but there's a synopsis, but now I want to read you the intro because the intro is just fascinating. I mean, it's got some details in it, which kind of, kind of diverge from the actual diet itself, but it explains the importance of it quite eloquently to proceed. Six in 10 adults in the United States have at least one chronic disease and four in 10 adults have two or more. Four in 10 adults, two or more chronic diseases. These diseases are a major cause, cause, cause of morbidity and mortality and they put a significant burden on the healthcare system as well as society at large. Aging itself has been identified as a common driver of chronic diseases and an important target for extending human lifespan, health span, I should say. Health span and lifespan, two different things. Uh, healthy years is quite an advantageous uh, objective. Now, this one line really sunk in and I want to express it to you as well. And hopefully you just this up, astounded by it as I am. To proceed, it has been also estimated that if we improve our collective health span, health span, not lifespan, health span, by just one year, the calculated savings are worth $38 trillion. One year, 
$1.5 trillion. That's how much impact chronic diseases have in our society as a whole. So we're looking at increasing the health spend by one year. What an incredible, incredible return. That is worthy of government investment to proceed as follows. And if by 10 years, those savings jump to $367 trillion, $367 trillion, and there's your footnote. I'll have the link to the study itself so you can follow that information on your own to see exactly how they collected the data. All right, biological age clocks, age clocks, age clocks based on DNA methylation marks have become important surrogate markers to assess the effectiveness and interventions at reducing biological age. I wanted to read you the intro because it explains more uh, of the lifestyle change and diet interventions, uh, why they did what they did. With the expectation that biological age reductions will compress uh, morbidity and extend mortality. Health spam. Modifiable life style factors including concentrated exposure to dietary epinutrients have been suggested to be able to favorably influence DNA methylation based clocks and therefore have the potential to compress morbidity and extend mortality. Epinutrients, did I just read it twice? Yes, this actually came up twice, but they repeated it twice, not I. Epinutrients may be defined as dietary nutrients that provide either substances, substrates, or cofactors for DNA methylation activity or influence the expression or rate of activity of DNA methylation related enzymes. So when you looked at the initial compressed or synopsis, I should say compressed, now it's the compressed morbidity, not compressed diets. Uh, study we showed before, you saw methylation cofactors, and that we'll delve into when it shows you, elucidates uh, the full dietary and lifestyle recommendations towards the end, not too long from now. Uh, basically, the activity, influence, expression rate of activity, DNA methylation, related enzymes, folate and betaine, for example, are cofactors in methylation, biosynthetic pathways, alpha ketoglutarate, vitamin C, vitamin A, are 10, 11 translocation, dimethylase, cofactors, and modulators and curcumin, epigallin, gallate, rosmaric acid, curcumin, luteinin, and luteinin, luteinin, and polyphenolic modulators of DNA methyltransferase enzymes. Last part, the polyphenol modulators of DNA methyltransferase enzymes. Important. All this, all important, but I want to emphasize that. The backstory from the original study. Uh, here it is right here. Now we delve into it a little bit deeper as to why they came up with the current study, but the back study results. This, it's also redundancy, and you would like to see that in studies itself. Even though too much redundancy, uh, then for those statisticians out there, you're in a Fisher test. Well, every once in a while, there should be one that comes out to counter that effect. But to proceed, that's data science. The modified by lifestyle intervention used by participants in this case series was first investigated in a pilot clinical trial in which participants, all men, was well, not fair, between the ages of 50 and 72, reduced their biological age by an average of 3.23 years as compared to controls. Now, this is a prior study, not the current study we're about to, uh, about to delve into. The case series reported on herein was conducted to further investigate a modifiable lifestyle invention that was largely the same in other populations, importantly in women. A uh, little side note, which is interesting. This was mostly women. There was one gentleman, and the one gentleman had to drop out of the study due to a stressful life event. And the interesting part about it is they measured the individual's biological age uh, after this uh, stressful event. And that stress did a lot to basically increase the biological age itself, not reverse, just to give you an idea of the impact and how much stress can have in regard to the aging process to proceed. Intervention was largely the same among the populations of portly women. And uh, da, 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 it, and of course there was a study we just showed you was, was once again, a randomized controlled study. And so here we go into the current study. There was a statistically significant difference in participants' mean biological age before 55.83 years, and after the eight weeks, 51.23. The eight-week diet and lifestyle intervention with an average decrease of 4.6 years. Remember the T-test mean the differences? Yeah, of course. The average chronological age at the start of the program was 57.9 years in all but one participant had a biological age younger than the chronological age at the start of the program. What does that mean? 
as follows, suggesting that biological age changes were unrelated to disease improvement. That is quite intriguing, and that will have to be expanded on, expanded on later on in future studies. Because otherwise, it's too, uh, up to try to translate now is very hypothetical. And instead, might be attributed to underlying aging mechanisms. That is really astounding. Now, here is the full diet. So if you look at it, keep in mind the devil's in the details. So you see, like, for example, the water, which I try to drink close to eight, I think, uh, glasses of eight ounces of water per day, the hydration, uh, the basically the, I don't bring up brand names, but a few of the supplements per se or the concentrates, uh, the other exercises, these interventions, in addition to looking at the methylation aspects of it, that was that, let's see, yeah, methylation and adaptogens, uh, it's quite intriguing. Now, I want to leave this up a little longer. And when it renders in 4K, you have the ability to read it quite well. Uh, to my other followers, um, followers, to my other friends on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, uh, an opportunity to visit the YouTube channel and it'll be large enough for you to read the whole thing. Otherwise, proceed, there it is. Again, keep in mind, not just the diet, but the interventions itself, and you do have intermittent fasting on there where the last meal is between 7 p.m. all the way to 7 a.m. So all of this plays a role, but to proceed. Participants follow an intervention that included a specific set of dietary recommendations, high in known epinutrients. Simple carbohydrates were restricted, and the diet was largely plant-centered, but included key nutrient-dense animal proteins from 5 to 10 eggs per week, 6 ounces of animal protein daily, and 3 ounce servings of liver per week. Huh. Or in a capsule liver supplement. Yay. Participants were also asked to eat all food within a 12-hour window. Remember, we covered this earlier in the intermittent fasting uh, studies. Each day to incorporate a basic level of intermittent fasting. Different from the original study, participants were encouraged to track their water consumption, aiming for 8 cups of water per day. Dietary supplements included probiotic containing 40, uh, 40 million colony-forming units of lactobacillus plantarum, 299V, uh, lactobacillus plantarum, and then there's the brand, I don't talk about brands, including our own, uh, which is an other vegetable powder rich in polyphenol compounds twice a day, to be fair to all. Lifestyle modifications that participants were asked to incorporate and include a minimum of 30 minutes of physical activity at least five days a week at an intensity of 60 to 80 percent maximum perceived exertion. That perception is going to change between individual to individual. All participants were encouraged to get a minimum of seven hours of sleep per night, participate in two 10-minute breathing sessions per day designed to elicit the relaxation response. A meditation video was provided. The intervention program was delivered through a beta testing of the HP, you know, health privacy, like that matters anymore. The app provided video and written instruction, daily tracking tools. That's a hint of the last pandemic stuff. Optional recipes, a shopping list, reminders for participants to complete. A summary of dietary and lifestyle interventions delivered through the app, displayed as today's foods, today's supplements, water goal, healthy habit diets, and so on and so forth. And again, on our reintroduce, reintroduce, I want to basically reiterate, redisplay that diet itself there once again. Again, the details are important. Not just the food, but the other lifestyle interventions themselves. And there's really not much of a conclusion. <laughs> Ironically, I look at the full study, it's like, all right, where's the conclusion? Well, that was pretty much it. And so it's pretty amazing overall. But however, though, you really got to look at it this way. Uh, how, I mean, it's like, it's really looking at this. And when you grab the, uh, the, uh, the gravity, the, the whole awesomeness of this, awesomeness, awe-inspiring, whatever you want to call it, that which looking at, now obviously there's going to be diminishing returns as time proceeds forward, one plus year reversal in biological age. Now keep in mind the study group is small, but it's reinforced by the larger randomized control study meant earlier. So there's some, so there's a lot of a, uh, weight to the study per se, uh, or includes a greater power factor. But however though, one 
year reversal, two weeks of lifestyle intervention, eight weeks total, 4.6 year biological reversal, if you're looking at the T-test difference of the means, uh, is just astounding. And when you look at the potential savings, and this is being just from a monetary fiscal aspect, a $38 trillion, if that health span is just increased by one year, wow, it pays to be proactive as opposed to be reactive. And that is just a true understatement. You have to give credit to the researchers here. And the interesting part about this is overall, everyone talks about longevity and health span, and everyone's talking about these very expensive interventions. So people are kind of like looking in a little bit of despair and see that longevity or life extension may be only a venue for the very wealthy. When in reality though, when we look at these methylations or DNA methylation interventions, it is not just for those which have a large amount of discretionary income. It is just for about anybody, just if they show the path and that way to do that. So as you see technology advancing and so on and so forth, and all those new tools and gadgets, always keep in mind, this is a very powerful tool on its own and it's purely can be in your own hands. Gratitude to the researchers, talk about reiteration, reiteration. I am humbled you watch and I look forward to see y'all once again next week. Catch y'all next time.